came I to went the with Jack White to the first home, the Cubs home game. What? Yeah. Hello and welcome to Shyaspora. I'm your host, Mark Morgan. This is a show where we interview those who left Chicago, but Chicago never left them. Today we have a very funny guy. Uh, you will see him in so many roles. Like you are actually surprised. You are like the journeyman of so many movies. <laughs> You've seen him Bridesmaids, Pursuit of Happiness. You've seen him in Superbad. You've seen him in You're in like Bless This Mess now, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's at the ABC show. It's awesome. Joe yeah. Nunez, everybody. So thank you so much for coming. A uh, lot of pride and joy for Chicago, yeah. which is which is awesome. He, he's got his cup hat. Your jacket even has the flag on it right Oh, yeah. Now. It's my cop jacket. So uh, let's start off with when I remember seeing Superbad, <laughs> the, the Fuck My Lifeline yeah. is the thing that stuck with me forever. Like, I remembered that. And I was like, yeah. th- did you ad-lib that or was that a part of yeah, the thing? Was it was just something that was never in the script. Uh when I auditioned, there was like one line in the script. <laughs> so just like, but, hey, you know. Like, like sir, did thing? you do this on the floor? Yeah, that was it. See. But we improvised so much in those movies, the hey. Ap- Judd Apatow films. You let you kind of do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was that's the thing. You, We shot what was on the page, you know, got coverage on that. Uh, and then like throw the script out and like let's improvise. That's awesome. For hours. But that's awesome. Yeah. I'm saying certain directors are not like that. Obviously, Judd Apatow is known for like letting his guys right. go, which right. is awesome. And then uh, also in The Pursuit of Happiness, uh, oh, I, yeah. I, the, the great reason I love uh, that scene where you're, you're the gentleman who runs over Will Smith's character uh, as he's like running around trying to catch like his little computer thing. Yeah. Uh, another re- I remember watching that. I was like, this guy had to have ad libbed this thing because I, I don't know if you did, <laughs> but but if you haven't seen it, it's a great scene. Uh, you jump out and you start cursing at him while you're apologizing to him. You're like, you say something like, uh, "Hey asshole, hey, like, asshole. Hey, hey asshole, are you okay?" Yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching that. I was like, "Are you like that's such a genius thing?" Because I've never seen. I, for some reason, I never saw a character do that. But I feel like yeah. anytime people get in those situations, that's exactly what they're thinking. Uh-huh. They're like. Dude, like, why did you, you jump about son of a bitch? You yeah, just, but, you hit my car. But are you okay? I don't want a lawsuit. But like, yeah. you know, yeah, what a dick. was yeah, that? Yeah, that was something. I think. Oh gosh, if I can remember correctly, we rehearsed uh, scenes, and that was something that we rehearsed. I was a pretty serious movie, though. Oh yeah, yeah. But to have me in there to do that little funny bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was, was great. great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, and actually got me another job with Will on another another film. Which movie was where that? Where it was called Seven Pounds. Oh, of course. Which was after, and I played. That was a very serious movie yeah, as well. Yeah, pretty, but the pretty scenes dark. that he and I had were pretty, were you know, argument scenes, just where we just kind of fought with each other. Through. That's awesome. But though. it was, it was, it was a little bit because it was a very dark, right? Very right. Serious. It, it, it was a very. <laughs> so would definitely, there's a little bit of comedic relief uh, in the scenes that I had with Will. That's awesome. Yeah, and and the funny thing is, I feel everyone should know this. When you do acting, a lot of times, whether you're with a director, or another actor, or whatever. You're, it'll just keep growing. It's like you'll do this bit, and then someone will be like, "That guy, I remember that guy. He was funny. Let's let's bring him back." Yeah. It's that kind of thing. It's it's like any other job. That People was, remember you for what you did. Yeah, thankfully they remembered me, <laughs> and then you know they remember they had me in for another thing like a couple years later, and Will was really sweet. He's like, "We got to do this every couple of years, don't we?" That's awesome. When he saw me, and I'm like. Really? That's awesome. You think of me? <laughs> and, you and thought then, of me? But super sweet guy. No, it's super awesome. sweet. I've, I've, people I've talked to have always said he's like he's great yeah. to work with. Yeah, yeah, and very funny. That's awesome. So funny. And then you also forty year old virgin Steve Carell when he finally gets uh, hitched or whatever he's doing or he brings his girl he home. He's married to her. Yeah. Right. He's going to the bedroom. The honeymoon suite. Yeah. <laughs> right where the the big climax. No pun intended. Uh, there you are buffing a floor and you're like yeah like, what you, you're like uh eh, come back in half an buffing, hour or something yeah. like that basically like they're ready just to go at it you know but it's a member but that's the thing it's like i always think about this uh for every single actor that i've ever watched even the any small role big role doesn't matter if you do something that like i remember you for for the rest of whatever you did your job and beyond so I'm yeah. just saying, well, thanks. You, should Thank be, you. you should be proud of that. I don't know. And like, again, for myself and probably people who watch and listen to this, it's like, that's my Chicago guy. Yeah. That guy did it right. I don't yeah. know. I'm just I, saying. I will be honest and say that the uh, fuck my life has gotten me a few free beers in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> a few free beers in Chicago. <laughs> it's pretty funny. 
So, yeah, I, I wanted to just know, and as I, I do for everybody who sits in that chair, yeah. how did you even, like, how did you get it? Like, I, obviously, I know a little bit of you went through Second City and things like that, but yeah. let's start young. Born in Chicago. Well, uh, technically East Chicago, Indiana. Oh, okay. Uh, in St. Catherine's Hospital. It's still there. But my mother moved us out, I think, when I was a year old. So I never grew up in Indiana, but I mean, and a lot of people will be like, what? <laughs> Nunez is not from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, no. It's okay. I f- yeah. You're forgiven. So yeah, I, I grew up my whole life in the city, uh, schools. Yeah. Where, um, where'd you go to school? Uh, St. Veronica's for grade school. So what neighbor? What neighborhood did you grow up in? I grew up in, in uh, pretty much, uh, it's called Avondale Park. Yeah, of course. Which is Addison. Uh, well, I, I was near Addison and Western. Yeah. Or more, more specifically, my claim to fame is uh, I was on Roscoe in California. The street I grew up on was Roscoe Street. And on the corner of Roscoe, like a half a block down in California, was Hot Dugs. Yeah. Oh, for, my gosh. Forever and ever. That's awesome. Before they, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before they closed. Well, but, uh, there's so many nowadays. It's like, a, yeah. is that still there? No, it's gone. It's like, oh. Nah, no, that's too bad. There's some, like, weird, like restaurant there now but it's like you look at it like eh, it's not hot dogs. <laughs> just disappointed yeah but yeah so i was gonna say do you ever go back to like that specific area just to kind of see oh this is where i grew up I, my parents are still there. they're still there yeah that, well that's still cool. in that house uh on roscoe i won't give the address no no you know, <laughs> please my mom don't doesn't, my mom everyone doesn't just starts showing up and saying my mom doesn't want life. the house egged or toilet paper <laughs> uh yeah i still go back hang out with the family my sisters live in portage park okay with their respective, you know, their families. Um, uh, my girlfriend lives in Old Town. She's she's a manager, house manager at Second City, where I used to work back in the day. And uh, <laughs> she's out there now. And she also studies there. So, I, so she lives in Old Town. When I go and visit, uh, I stay with her. And then I, you know, go to my spots, uh, hang out with the fam. Go to Bears games. Go to Hawks games. You still have your friends there and Whenever. things like that. Too? I've, I've got a few friends. All my friends are here, to be honest. Wow. Pretty much, with the exception of some high school buddies. Well, well, I mean, they're all over the place too. But uh, a couple high school buddies left that I kind of keep in touch with. But you know, my friends that I made in the improv community. Uh, are pretty much the guys I hang out with here yeah, today. Your actor friends and things like that, yeah. which is cool. I yeah. mean, that's great that you guys kind of like all moved out and. Yeah. I mean, my drinking buddies became my work buddies, and right. you know, just we just now we don't drink as much as we used to. Oh, well, you're working. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. Well, or or we're just too old right. to, drink, right, 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 to drink that much. It gets tougher. It yeah. always gets tougher when you get yeah. a little older. Back in those days, every night was like you know, go see a show, go to class. What do you do after a show or class? You went out and had beers at you know, whatever I O or whatever bar that was near uh, the class. Where. So when you, okay, so the timeline was, so you, you said St. Veronica, what'd you say? St. Veronica for grade school, and Gordon Tech High School, okay. which doesn't exist anymore. It's uh, It doesn't, I, I went to Von Steuben, but when uh, I went to Von, yeah. Gordon Tech did exist. Lane Tech, there's Gordon Tech, there was sure. a few of them. And, um, right down right down the street from each other. Yep, those yep. I don't know why that school went away. It was an all boys Catholic high school. Right. And I think just, the the a era foot, of they had a football team they had it all didn't yeah, they? yeah. I, was, I remember passing by because like, it was a big this, school the reason we moved to that neighborhood uh was so that i can go to gordon tech we i i think my one of my the first places we lived was like diversity and uh wilton diversity and uh sheffield okay so I, I grew up you know in my like diversity and sheffield little okay was a little guy gotcha but then we lived under the l that that uh, oh it's a brown God. line. That must have been a hell. It was like the diversity stop, and we were like the house that we lived in was under the L, and the backyard was like broken glass and oh, rocks, man. and you know. So my parents were like, "We, we weren't need far to get from Wrigley at all." No, no, but I hadn't got been to Wrigley yet. I wow. didn't go till I was, until I moved further away, like when I moved to my neighborhood. Wow. In uh, Avondale Park. Gotcha. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. So my parents and my mom wanted me to. My mom was the reason we moved to that area. Because she wanted me to go to Gordon Tech. Well, I wanted to go to co-ed, you know, of course. Meet, meet well, girls, yeah. yes. Yeah, meet girls. Instead, I went to the all-boys Catholic high school. But we hung out with, like, Madonna Girl. I got into plays. I got into that, like, for, that, like, theater. forced you to have to see girls. Yeah, totally. I mean, I knew that we went to, we would go to McDonough High School, uh-huh. uh, which doesn't also doesn't exist anymore. Yes. Over there on, uh, like, Belmont and Pulaski. Do you, you said Madonna, yes? Madonna. I, 
Do you know who who All sat girls. in that chair was Mary Lou Henner, who I think went to Madonna. She went to Madonna. Exactly. We knew that. Yeah. Yeah, so my sister went there for We talked about that. I was year. like, I, Madonna? I don't even know. She's like, yeah, it's gone. I was like... Oh, you didn't know about it, huh? No. Yeah, it left. It, it disappeared. Now it's now it's some development. But uh, yeah, it disappeared. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe 15 years ago. Gosh. Maybe as long as I've been here. I've been... I'll, I'll be... Here in LA, almost twenty years. Wow. Well, again, I was I was watching stuff that you were in. You were in Prison Break, right? Yeah, like, I like, did and, Prison and, and, Break. And, 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 that was like my first, and it was a big yeah. gig. I mean, out, out of the roles, TV. Like, yeah, yeah, that was a big one. I yeah. thought it was a pretty good role. It was fun. And I remember auditioning for it because they in laughed Juliet. at me. It was yeah. in Juliet, right? So, yeah, they flew me out to Juliet uh, like every week. That's so weird. Did they realize that you were from Chicago and they're like, "Hey, do you want to kind of go?" Like, how did that even happen? If, they didn't realize it at first. And then when I was being considered for the role, something to, something to the effect of, well, would you be willing? Because they found out I was from Chicago. Yep. And then some, somehow someone, I think an agent asked, would you be willing to be a local hire? Meaning, would you fly yourself out there and, you know, be a local actor? It's just so they could save, save like we money. Got people from, well, I'm sure there are tax things involved where it's like, yeah. if you hire local talent, things like that, you get tax breaks. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So absolutely. that that might have been why it was. Yeah, I was thrown into this dark world, and we actually shot in Joliet. Yeah, they laughed at me in my audition. <laughs> why? <laughs> Whatever sides I had, they were serious, right? Yeah, and it wasn't. I mean, that's a very serious, dark, yeah. You know, but you prison did, show. But you also played it. At least the character that you played. I think you played it like very legitimate, but it, real no. because it was real. I right. Was, I was. I was so afraid mm. on that set. Wow. My first day, I was so wound up and so wow. Yeah, my first, my very first scene. It was, it was crazy. They, my call was like at you know, ten o'clock in the morning, which was a late call. Yeah, and I didn't go until like maybe nine o'clock at night. So I was waiting all day wow. for my one first scene. Mm-hmm. And when I first did it, it was with uh, Amaury Nolasco, who played mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. cousin. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, at the end of the very first season, yeah. I'm the one that gets caught while everyone gets over You're the right, wall. Right, 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 right. So you were trying to go over a train or something happens. You get, you get caught. Yeah. I that, fall. You fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the, Was the that a stunt, wire. St- stunt double? No, I fell. Not, not, I didn't fall that, I didn't fall that far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they made it look like we we're way up there on this wire. Sure, sure, sure. And they all make it. And then my fat you, ass. You, you, you fall down. Falls on my back. <laughs> but then that's how they get you. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then they get me to... You know, was that that was your first? You consider that your first big gig? Well, my, I'm gonna say my first big thing was uh, Arrested Development. There you go. I got that. That was like my first big TV thing, you which know. is a big thing. Yeah, I mean, just they coming out of, out the gate to work on that one. Yeah, was and, probably awesome. And while I was working on that, um, I'd gotten little things, you know, before that, but uh, little guest star stuff that you know. I almost can't remember, but like one was uh, uh, on a sketch show with Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah, that's cool. I forget the name of it. My gosh, but it was so fun to work on a like a, a live show like that. Sure, sure. And I just did a little bit bit roles, but still, you know, th- got again, me in the union. Yeah, exactly. And that's really, I mean, that's that's the big fight, right? Yeah. It's like, how do I? How do I? It's always like that weird catch twenty two. It's like, how do I do this level and then also you know get enough hours and all that other stuff? Yeah. That's awesome that you did it. Yeah. So backtrack a little bit though. So yeah. you, you went, you go to high school, graduate Gordon Tech. What happens right after that? Or were you taking Second City, doing stuff like that then? No. How did how did that all it, happen? It wasn't. Uh, well, I'd always wanted to go to Second City, you know, but I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> really? Yeah. That, that, that's how it started. I started pre med at Creighton University. Wow. After after high school. So you were yeah. going to be a doctor? Yeah, I was pre med. That was my, that was my, you know, but I kept doing shows. Like I kept doing uh, the school plays and I just realized I kept changing my major and I realized I I don't belong here. I was in Omaha, Nebraska. You know, I thought I was having a great time. Yeah. And, you know, made some great friends there and partied. But you just joined a fraternity. You just knew that this. I just, I just not needed to get out of there. How'd your family feel about it? Like, hey, my son's going to be a doctor. Now my son's going to be a starving actor. How did that? Play? Well, they didn't know I was going to be an actor until I moved back to Chicago. I see. And then that's where uh, I got a job for a little bit. What did you I do? And I had a uh, pharmacy technician. Well, hold on. Before I did that, 
I did nothing after I got back from Omaha. You literally just and then, I, and then I got then I started taking uh, classes at Northwestern, acting. Nice. That's where I got. Uh, but I knew I wanted to go to Second City ever since I was like 10, 11 years old. My mom took me when I was in grade school. Just to go see shows? To go, well, it was a, she went on a company outing. Uh-huh. Well, she worked at Illinois Masonic okay. Hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it was a company, you know, thing, maybe a holiday outing. They, my dad didn't want to go, so she took me. This is early 90s. So, uh, this is like I was 11, 12 years old. You probably had a good crop of actors who were there. I think I remember Richard Kind being in that cast, there the first go. Second City cast I saw. Huh. I, I, I need to do the math on that. And maybe, uh, Mike Haggerty. Yeah. Who I, I'm still trying to get him in that chair at some point. I don't really, I, yeah. He I, lives here in the valley. Somewhere. I know, I know. I heard he was recently at the new Geno's East. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, you remember seeing those guys? Uh, yeah, and, and that cast. And you were just hooked after you saw. And it, I like, was just like, uh, yeah. I just remember. I can even remember being terrified. Like when people laughed, it was like a roar, and I thought they were screaming out of fear. <laughs> so I started, you know, I remember like being so scared and closing my eyes and like, oh no, they're laughing. They're laughing, and <laughs> it was smoky in there because you used to be able to smoke. It was a cabaret theater. Uh, but I just remember looking up and then seeing the people spit, seeing they just whenever they spoke, just spit coming out and I'm like, ew, this place is gross. <laughs> <It's terrible. laughs> That's what that, and you're like, but I want to do that. I had to, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. If my thought process was like, I have to do this someday. But I knew that I loved it, and that I would go back as you know, high school with my buddies. Uh, I used to be able to grow facial. Well, I, I can still grow facial hair, but I would grow a beard in the summers, in the summer months or holidays. And I would buy beer when we, <laughs> for all your guys, for the, for the free improv set after the main shows, uh-huh. there's a free improv set, 45 minutes or whatever, however long it was. As long as we had cash and I had that beard, I'm like, uh, picture old style cash. <laughs> and they let you be. And then, yeah. Wow. We'd sit there and just pound pitchers of beer watching these free improv sets. This is in high school. High school. So then yeah. you basically say, okay, I, you, you obviously, high school is when I was like, you knew this was something. Obviously, you're doing plays during high school, so this wasn't. Yeah. You were you were obviously involved, wanting to do it, and you always felt like you were gravitating towards comedic roles, or people were just giving you comedic roles. Um, I think just because I was the chubby guy. <laughs> That's you. They, they typecast you. Is that, is that what you're saying? It's just I was just you know I was the chubby guy that was funny, and I you know you use humor to you know detract to you know. Did that bother you? No, I liked it. I like that attention. I like that even today. Response. Even today. Uh, no. Now I despise it. No, <laughs> no, no. But I'm saying like some people. You know, some people. No, are, you love like, it when you can make someone happy or or chuckle or smile. Oh, I love it when someone and just or just hanging out with friends and and especially friends that are not you know industry. Sure, sure, sure. You know, people outside the industry and my family. Oh, of course. My family. They, they, they if I can make them laugh, you, it's a win. It's a big win. Yeah, and I and, and I, I get the get, like little nieces and stuff, so I'm sure that they love that. I get my get my humor from my family, of course. <laughs> my dad, my dad is always telling me jokes. Both your parents are still around. Things. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Thank God. That's awesome. Thank God. I'm so old, and so are they. <laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, um, my dad's always telling me, "He's like, hey, I have a joke for you." Oh guys. God. Uh, he's Dad jokes, yeah, yeah, but it's just I have like, jokes. You could use it in your. Yeah, it's like, it's like, Dad, like I, I do this for a living. Like it's, it's okay. I, nah, I'm never like that. I'm like, really, tell me, okay, okay. You and are a good I son. Laugh. Um, no, because I will use something. Oh, you <laughs> really? Will. It actually helps. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Dad. Tell t- t- me your jokes, <laughs> huh? Okay. So does he and then watch? and then. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> dumb, but I'll use it. Does he ever you watch know. and go? No, the one thing he did tell me. When he, I'm, he was very proud of me when I did Prison Break. Yeah. And he finally sees me. And then I think we watched an episode together at my parents' house. And uh, after we watched it, I was like, huh? Pretty cool, huh? He's like, finally, you got, you ended up somewhere where I always thought you'd end up. <laughs> all in jail? Oh, my God. He made some joke like that. We all burst out laughing. That's like, ah, really good. But the irony, here's the funny thing. Yeah. You did Prison Break, but... Yeah. You've been like a security guard in like multiple things. Yeah. Like I always thought that was funny. Like I remember seeing yeah. you, you were in The Watch. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You were like a guard in there. You were a guard in in, in bridesmaids. So yeah. like, it's like you can't get out of the prison system. Like you're either uh, I'm a, some <laughs> kind of something, yeah. something about it. I don't know. Some kind of uniform guy. Yeah, or, I don't know. Um, it was just funny. Yeah, no, that is funny. We should play. Uh, we should play doctors and lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> I should play doctors. Yeah. that's one thing my mom's always wanted me to be. Like getting like being a like she wants me to be in Chicago Med or Chicago PD or, you, or why you shouldn't you? you could. She's always. I mean, I grew up loving those shows, yeah, like yeah. like saying elsewhere. Sure, growing but up watching that. It's funny enough, a guy who also sat well in that chair uh, yeah. was William Daniel. Oh my God, he went to Northwestern. Yeah, yeah I but, did a year and a half, and then you and then you went and, and then you uh, ended up yeah, uh, and then reading. I and then I kept and I did some improv classes at Piven Theater Workshop, oh, of course. Which is right there, right off campus. So if people don't know, that's Jeremy Piven's mom, I think, who started yeah. it? Yeah. Parent, both parents. Both parents. Burn Piven is the founder. Burn and uh, Shira Piven was one of my first improv instructors there. Did you know Did you went. know Jeremy from that ever? Not at all. Actually, I never met Jeremy until I moved out here years later. Many years Did later. you ever tell him that you actually went yeah. to his parents? Yeah, I saw him at a, an event. I'm like, I just want to say that... You know, your parents are the reason that I kind of pursued my, you know, That's acting. awesome. He's like, oh, well, thanks, man. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> and, I, and then he's like, he said, and then he gave me his keys to go get his car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding, Jerry. No, I'm no. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was very appreciative of that. I'm like, they're the reason I wanted to pursue the acting, pursue right. improv. That's pursue. cool. That's cool. Yeah. I always love knowing that because you always want to know how people what, what get someone ticking not, uh, into that. So. It's it. It's because they showed me that I could do it. That you know all of those brilliant actors that I saw on stage, performing improvisation comedy. They they grounded it to like yeah, you could just do it. Yeah, I mean it started off with you know theater games, sure. improv games, sure. But you know doing scene work, it's like oh yeah, I have I I can. I can have a mind for this. I yeah. can do this. That's awesome. Yeah. And it was, a, yeah, and it wasn't, and when I really got into my improv training, Second City. Mm -hmm. You did them all, though, Olymp didn't you? I did all of them. Improv Olympic, the Annoyance Theater. Right. Um, uh, you know, different, you learn different things from different places, different, uh, you know, the Herald at, out of I.O., Second City's, you know, it's... It, well, it's the epicenter of, you like, wanna, all You want to be there. Um, the Greats came out of Second City. Who was your crew? Anybody out out here besides he, Horatio Sands is who I hang out with. I, I'm working. Most. I'm working on him getting him too. He has his own. He has his own uh, podcast stuff too. Yeah, Horatio. Yeah. Um, Kevin Dorf, uh, who was Second City mm -hmm. main stage, uh, wrote for Conan yeah. forever. Yeah. The old Jerry Minor did SNL and then he moved out here, and I would hang out with Jerry, and in turn, because I was hanging out with Jerry, he was doing Mr. Show with Bob yeah, and Dave. Right. There was really almost nobody here from Chicago yet. There were there were handful. You feel like more people were in New York at the time, or, or that New York left? or people didn't move out for some reason. You know, it that, wasn't that, until that after I got here. I think, like after two thousand, is when people started just in droves started well, coming out here. Now it's like no one stays. Yeah, if they if they really want to do it, they don't. Oh yeah, no one stays. Yeah, my roommate just moved. My new roommate. Was on main stage for the last two years. Gotcha, Jeff Murdoch. Huh. Ding. <laughs> Shot. He's a brilliant, brilliant kid. But um, it seemed like there were just handfuls of people when I moved out here. I moved wow. out here with two friends, uh, who were I was part of a Latino sketch comedy troupe called Salsation. <laughs> Great. And we had this uh, sketch comedy show that we did as part of Second Cities, and this was like while I was. And the touring company and, and, you know, after I'd done all the training and I was just writing sketches, mm -hmm. sketch shows with this, in particular, this one, uh, Salsation, uh, Latino sketch comedy troupe. Mm -hmm. And we were people from all levels of experience, but, you know, we workshopped, workshop, we did little shows, improv, and then sketch shows in Pilsen. Oh, cool. You know, every weekend. And, and it was great. We had developed a following. Anyway, long story short, we did a like a diversity weekend or something or two weekends where our name of our show was touched by an anglo <laughs> and it was sketch music that's great little improv that's great it's a great we, name we we did we sold out 
every show that we had. A, because we had a little bit of a following, and B, because it was a really, really good show. And we ran that show for eight and a half, nine months, because Second City kept like, hey, we were up in Donnie Skybox, which Skybox, which was like a like a mini little third stage upstairs for experimental, you know, shows. Uh-huh. But we just kept packing that house. Oops, so so they're like, keep it going. They're like, yeah, and they would like even advertise us a little bit. That's and, cool. For, so, for being like, the, you got to yeah, like the outsider, but no, oh, that's great. So, yeah, and we sold out, we sold out quite a bit and we, you know, developed the following. People came back and saw us time and time How again. How old were you at this point? Man, 20, 30, uh, probably 28. Gotcha. Late 20s. So when, when do you think the, the movie and the TV stars started like really kicking in? Um, or was this before... Before definitely that. well um, because i think definitely because um people saw me because we had showcases for nbc i see we were part of showcases you know and, and people would come into town from networks to look for you know new talent, talent. And mad tv was auditioning a lot gotcha so they were seeing people of color you know sure 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 um for uh for sketch comedy and and there weren't very many horatio was already on his way Mm-hmm. to SNL mm-hmm. Jerry Minor same thing I think one woman saw us in particular she really liked us cut to when I'm when after our eight eight and a half month run nine month run uh, we, we have a little break and then I the holidays happen and we get together with my little Salsation troupe and I'm like I'm going to LA for pilot season who's with me you said this yeah you, you, you spearheaded in our me- yeah in our meeting you know, like you know, the post. Yeah, yeah. Little, it's almost like know. almost like the glory days. We just we hit them. Yeah. Now what are we gonna Dude, do? Dude, what are we gonna do now? We should go to pilot season for L- to L A. And then who's with me? Two people decided to come with me. And, how, out uh, of how many? Two. So it was three of us. Oh, so, so what? Ha- <laughs> so we moved out to L A. Together, together in Feb- February. Wow. To uh, Paul and Diane, and we we started our own little mini version. Wow. Of, of Salsation. Out here. Out here. And called uh, Barrio Speedwagon. <laughs> Still it's, it's Latino improv. That's awesome. Sketching on and I think the name <laughs> of our show was Barrio's. Barrio Speedwagon. And everyone loved it. Everyone loved that title. And that was because of my buddy Joe Carney, one of my improv, one of my best friends. Still, Joe Carney came up with that. That is awesome. White Boy came up with that. That's great. Good for you, Joe. And you know who saw that show when we did it here in L.A.? I.O. when it was like a little 50-seat, 60-seat yeah, yeah. theater on Santa Monica Boulevard. Allison Jones. She's the one that, that casts all of Judd Apatow's stuff. Sure, sure, and sure. Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the huge. big comedy. Big stuff, yeah. Allison Jones. She saw us, and we didn't have representation. But she had one. Of, she found one of our postcards like on the Paramount lot. For some reason, my buddy Paul and I got on the Paramount lot. And we had stacks, <laughs> just, thousands just of ha- postcards. Them? And we just went to the bathrooms, went to the commissaries. We just went to cars, as many cars before security yeah, yeah, yeah. kicked our asses off the lot, <laughs> and just just papered the town with our, our postcards. And there were. But was it for like show? It was like it was our show? Yeah, gotcha. that we were doing at you know, baby improv Olympic. Yeah, I, I I love that stuff by the way because yeah. it's it's true grassroots, just like yeah. Push. I mean, we were but nowadays. On there's the no streets. way, you, no way you'd get on that Paramount lot. Well, nowadays you have social media to do all that. You don't, yeah. have, to, you don't have to get off your fat ass. And I don't know. It's, it's sometimes put I, postcards. Believe, believe it or not, though, I really do think that that social media. I mean, nowadays it, it's you're so consumed. Sometimes when you see something in, in your face, you're like, "What is this?" Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't, it's just kind of funny that way. But the fact that you couldn't get on a par- a lot these days without you know no, going through no. some sort of security or whatever god knows what yeah but, but that's, i don't know how we i mean it's it was always like that it still is after all it was very post 911 yeah so i don't know how <laughs> how you pulled it or was it pre 911 cuz we moved out here in 2001 it might have been like right before i think it was, it was in right february before. It was i think before. it was right before wow cuz we did our show for like 4 months or something so you were just kind of doing no. your thing trying to get your name out there Allison so, Jones picked up a postcard somewhere, and she came to see our show on her own. Anyway, she emailed me. She emailed us because we had a little website set up and stuff, and she emailed us. And was like, uh, I think you guys are so funny. Uh, do you have any representation? I'd love to bring you in to audition. Huh. We never booked anything, any of the sitcoms that she brought us in on. 
but she kept calling us in. She wow. she loved us. She loved us, and she's the reason that I got in all the Judd. She's Epitone. still like what, yeah. She, do you ever talk to her? Everything. Uh, I see her once in a while. You know, she'll call me in for something. That's really cool. Yeah. Good. For yeah. You. That's awesome. You stuck with it though. You, I had you, no you, place to go. I wasn't gonna go back to Chicago. Uh, just because I, I, no, I stuck it out. Yeah, Do you feel especially like so- that first year, man. There was like a strike. There was oh yeah, nine right. eleven, and then there was another strike, commercial strike, writer strike, 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 strike. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I had to get a you know a dumb little job. What'd you do here? I was a pharmacy technician at here in L.A. Chatsworth Pharmacy. Huh. That's what I did after college. I worked. You told me children's you hospital. Uh huh. I was an inpatient pharmacy. That was in Chicago. Yeah, in Chicago. Was it your parents? Your parents hooked that up? Because no, no, no. I was, at, I was at Children's Hospital there, Illinois Masonic. I have nine lives. Said kind of. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm always curious about this. So you had yeah. what kind of jobs did you have when you grew up? So you, you worked there I after was, college. Yeah, I mean, my first job actually in high school, I was a, a medical. See, this is why I thought I was going to be a doctor. I wanted to be. I thought it was because I had a, my first job ever was working uh, medical research at the University of Illinois. Chicago. Oh, yeah. At Chicago. And that was for, my mom worked for an ENT doctor, and he had all these, like, um, you know, research projects happening at UIC Circle Campus, Mm -hmm. and uh, the medical campus, and that was my first job, just being a little research assistant. And you liked it? Like helping, yeah, I thought it was cool. Like, eventually, you know, learned how to cut up lab rats and stuff, and... (laughs) cesarean sections on mice and exciting shit bro yeah i did i mean i did some gnarly shit too i mean and then but you know i got more of that acting bug and i kept doing more and more of that second city it propelled you to yeah is is, yeah when i took second city classes it was after like a bad breakup i'm like screw everything i'm gonna take improv classes like i always wanted i'm gonna do what i want instead of what (laughs) The relationship one. Everyone's like, "Why are you crying, bro?" Like, calm down. <laughs> Allergies. <laughs> but you, you ended up. You obviously. So you, you stuck it out here. Yeah. And then you, funny enough, they fly you back for for prison break and stuff like that. But yeah, that was did, that was amazing. I, I worked on that show for months. That's awesome, though. Man, they kept flying me back. Well, I was only supposed to do three episodes, and then the the crew, one it. of the creators, yeah. That's how it goes. They kept writing. They, they write kept writing. writing. They kept writing. And they said, dude, they called me on my birthday one day. And I was in my trailer. Dude, we just want to tell you what an amazing, awesome job. You know. That's awesome. Thanks. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to like suck up or anything. No, but, no. But they were like, you know, the reason you're still here is because we just think you're great. And, and we're sorry about the fat suit because they put a fat suit on me. They did. I mean, I was already chubby. They did. But they well, had a, they had this whole thing. <laughs> why? This whole storyline. And I had to wear a fat suit the whole time. That's weird. Like an extra, you know. Yeah. They just needed to have it. Because they wanted me it up. to do an episode where I was going to lose a ton of weight in order to get in on the breakout. I see. But they were like, ah, that's that's too goofy. That's too stoogy. That's too, so they just, they're like, well, we already established you with this enormous fat suit so you, you have to like stay that. like that. <laughs> wow. i wish i still had those pictures of me just taking selfies in the trailer mirror with my <laughs> fat suit it was like a girdle thing and wow yeah but uh, they just kept me in it <laughs> that's crazy yeah you have an agent now do you have a oh manager? yeah yeah i've had all that stuff for a while thank god i how did it happen uh my first manager i got and this is when i this is probably was with brillstein gray i auditioned for a bunch of things. There was a casting director. She was a Chicago girl, Jennifer Dumont. She's still here. She still works in casting. Uh, she brought me in. She saw me in something, and I think, and she kept bringing me in for, like, improvise. This is before improv became a huge, you know, mm-hmm. tool to. And yeah, most know, people were sticking to script at the time. These probably. were, yeah, and really the only people were that were improvising in film. Or television for that matter. Film were like the Guffman, waiting for Guffman guys. Oh, yeah, sure. You know? Yeah. First manager, uh, auditioned for these, like, for Fox and for NBC. NBC. They were like improvised, you know, hidden camera shows. I see. Because I think that was what they used improv for, like Punked. I, yeah, okay. Remember? Of I course, remember I did a few of those back in the day. Did you? Yeah. Every improviser on the planet imp- uh, auditioned for Punked. Huh. And then shows like that were being, you know, uh, shopped around to, to major networks. Cool. So I auditioned for 
a couple of those. I got pretty far. I got to the testing stage on two of those. Hmm. One of them, it went away. Like the network pulled out or something. So there was another one for maybe NBC. I went far. I was about to test for that. Again, the network pulls out. So I, I get this close in my first, you there know, within my like first that. year, that close. Huh. And like, no, nah, nah, we don't want to do it. But then I remember getting a call from, because uh, I didn't have reps yet. Uh, and, and they got a hold of Jennifer, the casting director, mm-hmm. and she got a hold of me and said, hey, Doug Robinson, who's Nick Swardson's like uh, happy, well, he's the happy Madison guy. He was Adam Sandler's main guy, exec producer. Mm-hmm. And they, they formed, he and Adam Sandler formed Happy Madison together. Right. But he was, you know, he was independent before that. He, Tom LaSalle, Doug Robinson, individually got a hold of me and said, we like you. We we think you're going to do great things. Met with me individually. Talked to me. What do you want to do? Uh, do you have representation? I'm like, no, I just got here. Uh, and they hooked me up. They set me up. Like, they just made the calls. Go see this guy. Go see this guy. Wow. So that's how it happened. So that definitely opened a door in the beginning. That's really cool. Yeah, they really liked what I did in those, you know, those improvised auditions. Sure. Which was funny because, you know, just auditioning with people that were so much more experienced than I was, so much better than I was. Uh, but if you're good. People that I looked up to growing up, you know, in Chicago – Seeing some of those people, Second City main stage people, yeah. I was like, oh my, oh, my God, what am I doing here? And I still say that when I see them. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I, what am I even doing here? Mm. But obviously you But did. now I, there's nothing else. I, 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 I don't know how to do anything else. That's what every, but, every actor says. <laughs> like, like, it's almost like you can't do anything else. Like, this is you now, you know? Yeah. yeah. But that's great. Yeah. Uh, Are you happy? Uh, very lucky. I'm very much the Forrest Gump of <laughs> yeah. of the Hollywood, you know, the you, LA. You've thing. literally done I mean, if you check this guy's IMDb, it's like you've done everything. I feel like you've done so many shows. But to my mother's dismay, I haven't done a medical drama yet. <laughs> we'll work or on comedy it. Or comedy for I'll see She's what like, I'll see what I can do. Why can't you be in scrubs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always dissatisfy that mom. Yeah. Come on, calm down. No, they're happy. They're they're I mean, you know, I'm making Knock on wood. I'm still making some money. Yeah, exactly. You, on, on acting. You're out here. Yeah. You know? It's like that. It's like I always, you know, think of myself as that, that officer and a gentleman part. I mean, Chris Farley does it in uh, Wayne's World where they're training to be, uh, for Chris Farley, is training to be a roadie. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then the guy that's like the drill sergeant is like, Oh yeah, yeah. get out of here! It's like a montage, or whatever. Yeah. Where he does it. <laughs> but when, it's, but it's, yeah. a, it's a, it's a, it's a, an homage to the officer and a gentleman, where he's like getting his ass beat by the by the drill sergeant. He's like, get out of here! You get out of here! You don't belong here! And he's like, I got no place to go. Right, right. you're stuck. I'm, I have no place to go. I mean, yes, I go back to Chicago, but what, what the f am I going to do there if I don't get a job on you know, Chicago Fire or right. something? Have you, have, you ever, have, you, <laughs> have you have you tried to get into those? Things? You know, I always say... Because there are I, a number of people who I think, you know... Yeah. Chicago people who are yeah. there who are from And Chicago. I've told my agents here, like, hey, man, if there's something that comes up on one of those Dick Wolf shows... Yeah. I've done drama, you know. And then uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, nothing really comes up. Uh, local... If I do something locally... Excuse me. Like a... Like a one episode, mm-hmm. you can't audition for another role for another, for three years or something crazy. Well, well probably right because people will know that you were on that show as that character, which is dumb. Because yeah, I get it. Well, no, I'm saying I'm saying like that's yeah. that's their rationale. Is but there are actors that were on, uh, you know, uh, what was that police drama in New York that shot for like fifty years? Are you talking about Law and Order? Law and Order. Oh, dude, the people recurring and all sorts of stuff on that. Yeah, I remember and played, seeing. Like, and played like, like that person played that. Yeah. Five different characters over the years. I know it's weird, mm. but Law and Order. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. You don't want to repeat. But still, I understand as from an yeah. actor's perspective, it's like, come on, like, slot me in. Oh, oh, I'd love to get on one of those shows. If you know anybody, if you if you <laughs> hook it up, if you're watching this, come on, man, get me a job on one of those shows. All of a sudden, it's like. The serial rapist of children. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like uh, no, I didn't no, want that role. No, 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 no. I'll have to turn that one down. <laughs> For how much? 
Oh, triple? Oh, yeah. No. Great. No, never. How old are the kids? No. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that would be the dream. Like, I mean, I've already experienced that with Prison Break. They kept flying me out as a rock star. It was a rock star. And then hanging out with those guys whenever we had time off. Of course. Like, week like, off, we'd go to clubs, red red carpet. That, that's what... I, so, so, two questions. Because I, I, I want to get into the Chicago stuff a little bit. Right, but right. No, no. I do want to know what... What do you want? Like, what what is your ideal situation right now? It changes for me on a daily basis. But I'm curious for you. Like, what? Like, <laughs> do you want to do a huge movie and have a huge? Role? Oh yeah, I love yeah, I things? love film the most for sure. I love the process. Do you want to do more drama? Uh, yeah, but I think people, I would. I think. I mean, you're a pretty funny dude, but I'm just saying. A lot of times when when you do a lot of funny, sometimes you're like, I just want that role where I'm like, you know, Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> Or whatever, <laughs> you know, some, some, something where it gets really or like, serious. <laughs> or like the character that uh, 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 Ben Stiller plays in Tropic Thunder. Oh, like yeah, the yeah, guy yeah, yeah. Like, So serious. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not that guy. Um, no, I'd be happy. Uh, I should be, I should, you know, I should want more. I no. should be more ambitious. I, you don't but have what to. What if I got on a show that shot in Chicago and I could live in Chicago be with for most of the year and be be close to the family, close to the, the girlfriend. Um, especially now that my, my sisters are having babies. Yeah, now you want to be around my for sister, that. My sister, oh, man. Yeah. I missed I missed a lot of the childhood. The, you know, I have a 13-year-old niece. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I feel like I missed out on a lot of her little life. And You don't understand. This yeah. is one thing that I know that secretly or on. A lot of the family in Chicago, like they're all, there's always like a little. You can always come back, but there's also this thing where they're so proud of you that like you're doing it and they haven't. Or uh, trust me, I bet you that 13 year old niece of yours is like, oh, she wants to my, move here to yeah, live with me. My, yeah, exactly. Yeah. My uncle, he's in movies and TV, and then everybody at school is like, like, what are you talking about? No way. No, he is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you should be proud of that. One of my prouder things when she was little, I do a voice on Elena of Avalon. Yes, my daughter watches that yeah. show. Which is cool. Yeah. Ar- Armando. Armando, or, yeah. Captain of the Castle. And I, when I first landed that, it was like my first ever big voiceover thing. And it was for Disney. I'm like, oh, yes. I'm going to get a plush toy out of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Forget, um, the, forget the salary. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm doing this because I want my nieces. My, you know, kids. It's for kids. Yeah. I love children. Yeah. And my, oh, I just can't wait for my niece to see this. And to see, and the, you know, how much the character looked. Looks like me, sure. Except I'm much thinner, and um, not. Uh, no, but th- that was a moment. Like, there's no fat suit on the characters. No, you're saying. no. But I did pitch once where, because he's very round. I did pitch one episode where Shore Armando, end of the day, tired, washing his face, brushing his teeth, hand zips his big old and it, coat, it, it and just, just pops skinny out. Little body. Oh, that'd be funny. Yeah. It's a big body, but he unzips it, and it's like this rail thin body. Like, <laughs> They're like, sorry, it's not like, going to happen. Like, shut the hell up. <laughs> sing. Sing, <laughs> monkey, sing. Like, do, do, do you actually have to do a lot of singing for that kind of thing? I have. I've sung a few songs. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of fun. I have to sing poorly, kind of poorly. Like for your like character. I, for because your character. I'm a really great singer. I'm sure. I bet you. you oh are. man, karaoke. If you were, if you were, what was it? What was the? Uh, what was it, the salsa? What is it? Your, salsa your, salsa station. Do you have to sing for those? Uh, I did bits? a little bit. You know, we do a little, little singing and dancing. But you know, my if I could, oh that's yeah, if I could be on a show where I'm the greatest karaoke singer <laughs> and I just travel like like Bruce Banner did from town to town, <laughs> just being just, a karaoke, just, singer? just be a karaoke I don't master. Why you don't just teach that. that'd be that'd be awesome where it's like no like you take that hidden camera thing it's just like the the guy who you're just like oh, some drunk dude but you kill it every time and every song i and, sing and all of a sudden you become you get a following yeah it's a genius uh, well, idea uh, well, help me write it yeah bro. let's do it we got to be right it we have five minutes let's go yeah no dude uh no i like to sing that's that's something that i think comedians uh love to do karaoke and hmm. because we all wish we were rock Singers? stars yeah isn't that funny? Yeah, it is. And then it's funny. I worked in a, a, a pilot with Alanis Morissette and her band. Oh, wow. Well, long time ago. Yeah, I was going to say, this is, can't be recent. It was called With the Band. No, a long time ago. Another one of the first few years I was here. And it's be the whole thing was like, it was like, 
just a day in the life of Alanis Morissette and her band and hanging out with them. And, but it was all, it was like improvised too. It was like, the, I mean, there were scripts and everything and she had lines, but we would improvise a little bit. Like the people that, that we were, that were brought in were improvisers uh -huh. to improvise around the band and between takes we'd hang out and they'd play and we'd be like, Oh man, we wish we could do that. We Isn't wish that... we could play. And they, she and the musicians, you. the musicians, even Alanis would be like, no, no, no. I want to do what you do. Yes. Like just create, make those things just off the top of your head and just make people laugh. Like, oh my God. And like, no, man, fuck you. <laughs> You're a rock star. <laughs> you get laid. <laughs> right. We don't. I don't know. Can I, guess, I, can I say things like that? You can say whatever the hell you okay, want. Cool. Um, that's really funny. We love to, yeah, we love to sing. Like Horatio and I do a, um, a duo. We do an act. Where? We just do it for ourselves. Just karaoke nights. Oh, I gotcha. We're Los Fat Beatles. <laughs> so we're these guys that are from Echo Park, Echo Parque, California. We speak in <laughs> broken English. Like we are Los Fat Beatles whenever we do a karaoke thing. And we just speak, we do Beatles songs because he and I are big Beatles fans and we know the songs and we like to harmonize. So That's we awesome. sound terrible when we're introducing ourselves and talking to the but crowd. The <laughs> but then when we sing it, we're like, oh my God, that's the Beatles. <laughs> Except they're chubby and Latino. <laughs> he can sing? Yeah. Horatio can yeah, sing? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I'm, and I like to harmonize. So that is so funny. So he can trust me to like jump in and do the harmonies. I'll be, I'm the Paul to his horn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. That's great. Yeah. I we, do Los, we do Los Fat Weezer. <laughs> we sing Weezer songs again. You just always have to change it up yeah. a little bit. We're Los Fat, you know, David Bowie or <laughs> Los Fat, whatever. But it's not Gordo. It's Los Fat. Los Fat. P-H-A-T. <laughs> oh, there you Los go. Los Fat. Like cool. <laughs> like we're fat. That's right? awesome. That's what, I didn't know you did that. Yeah, that's not really many cool. people do, but that's our thing. So I want to yeah. kind of just know when you go to Chicago. Yeah, where, where do you go? Where do you hang? What do you eat? What do you, what do you do? <sighs> I eat everything. Look, no. <laughs> just look at me, man. <laughs> uh, Lou Malnati's is my pizza. Yeah, that's. I mean, uh, Piquads I had once, and I'm like, mm, this is too burned. I don't know what it's, I thought. It's still pretty good. I have good. to go back. I have to go back. I've only had it once in my life. Pequods. Pequods. I had only once in my Pequods. life. Pequods. Well. Yeah. I said Pequods. That's is that, okay. Is that weird? Nope. Because I just I'm not I'm not that guy. <laughs> Lou Melnati's. Yeah. Uh, I like to go. A buddy of mine, Dan, who still lives in Chicago. He's an improv guy. Um, he's great because he knows North Side and South Side Italian beef joints. Oh, nice. So we go on Italian like Johnny's is like one of the best. Never Johnny's been to beef. Johnny's. Portillo's is good, but you know I mean, it's like the it, it's whatever one we can knows get it, it here. Yeah, we do. And well, went apart. Yep. So I won't go to Portillo's when I go back to Chicago. Because you, I'll go to the, you know, uh, uh, Gene and Jude's. Uh huh. Or do, do you ever get Lou's sent out here? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. Had that happen. It's good. It's so expensive. It's still, but by the way, it's still good. There's yeah. nothing but like getting you know, fresh, fresh right out of the oven. oven. But still, when you're there, it's like mm -hmm. oh, it reminds me of home. Whenever I've eaten it. Do you eat hot dogs out? There's a place called uh, 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 La Villa. In, in Chicago? La, that we grew up going to as La kids. La Villa. Never heard of yeah, it. Yeah, it's on, uh, it's off of Addison and Pulaski. So we go there. Uh, and then, again, I tell you, I, this, I got this buddy who just, I, he's an Uber driver too. So he's like, hey man, I go to all these places. He takes you around. For like the, 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 the cracker thin crust Pizzas, yeah, there's only taverns. there's only one spot that I go to for that. Where's that's that? Barnaby's. Never heard of it. <sighs> we gotta go. Okay, here or there? No, it's there. Oh, but I'm saying if we are ever in Chicago, Barnaby's. Together, yeah, that's where. And we're. we were. You, yeah, you we were. Out. <laughs> we should have. Should have missed should've, out. Should have figured. Well, we didn't. We didn't officially become best friends until now. But right, right. We Barnaby's. Barnaby's. You gotta go. I grew up on that. Nancy's Pizza is something we used to eat. What's Nancy? That was on Broadway though, in like it, Lakeview. Do you remember the old Demon Dogs? Yeah, underneath, underneath the, the L, L in Fullerton. That was a love that. Place. I love that place too. That you was, walk in there and it's like Chicago music it blaring. Was it was awesome. 24. It was awesome all the time. Yeah, you know the owner was Pete Chivarelli. He was like a, uh, he was the manager oh, of Chicago and Poison. Know. That's why he's the the hair band rock band Poison. They're not from Chicago. You though. always no, but you always saw the picture because he he was their manager. I didn't know that. So Pete, I think, met these Chicago guys out of DePaul. That's why it was there. Huh. I think some of the musicians, some of the bandmates, band members of 
Chicago came out of DePaul University. I didn't know that. Yeah, and that's why they had it there. That's cool. Yeah. And then, I miss it because I used to go there before I went to games at Wrigley. <laughs> so around that area, there's a great Mexican spot also right on Fullerton and like Lincoln. There's It's like a hole in the wall. I used to go. Great house? It was. Oh, oh, was, uh, 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 Allende. Allende. Dude, <laughs> how did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we used to go there. Great I just home. remember getting my horchatas at Allende. And Allende. Dude, it was like, I get, I get my little tostada and I was like, oh. God, I miss it. I, 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 I haven't been there so long. It was so good. Yeah. You know, uh, I uh, I helped start a Chicago bar out here. Really? Where we watch Bears games. I I didn't I don't own it. I didn't help I didn't build it, but I helped get people out there and now it's just, it's called uh the Escondite. Where is it? It's on fourth and Boyd, downtown Los Angeles. Oh, it's downtown. Yeah. There's huh. parking, there's a parking lot. For, we should for we games. should we should go for a game. Oh, you would be so, you'd be sh- you'd be shocked when you walk in there. Wow, there's so much like Chicago memorabilia. Because I have this group called Chicago and LA on Facebook. Oh, and it's people that are you should join it. Yeah, I should. Chicago, and we post up like when we have. I should probably post up and let them people know about this. Yeah, absolutely. I, Some idiots from Boston uh, put their podcast on our page, and we're like, uh, well, whatever. I didn't even know this existed. Chicago in LA. All right. A Facebook page. I'll check it out. Check it out on Facebook. Whenever we have an event at the Escondite, which is the hideout mm-hmm. in English, mm-hmm. uh, like we had um, members of the Bears organization, marketing department, come for the Bears and Rams game. And we had an all-day like tailgate That's party. That's awesome. I mean, then there was a school bus that went to the game that took those of us that had tickets. Wow. Willie Galt showed up. Wow. Took pictures with us. Get the hell out of here. Signed autographs all day long. Uh, the Bears rep Laura Connolly, she she reached out to us. She works for the Bears, and said, "Hey, I see you guys have a strong presence, Chicago people. We'd love to do something with you for the Bears game when they come to play the Rams." We're is, like, "You found us. This is we are it." That is awesome. So we had a huge event. Have you sung at Wrigley yet? No, I'm working on that. No, yeah, you should, or, th- or at least throw the pitch. I told Sam Levine when he was here, he should do it. I'm, my goal, and I reached out to some people to see if I can pull it. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah, uh, he, I'm sure he'd. Love we're it. all big, huge Cubs fans. Yeah, he was with us in our house with Horatio and I. So, so tell me, tell me the story about what happened because you said the World Series, 2016. Yeah, we're like, this is going to happen, and Horatio and I. Are, Big Cup fans, and I go to his house to do laundry or whatever, <laughs> and I like and watch Cub games. That's kind of what I do all summer at his house. Laundry, watch the game. Uh, I think this was early August, maybe July, late July. Right, like we, we were, we were, on, we were streaking. We were winning everything. Cubs game. This is not the World Series. This is just the regular I'm season. I'm telling you, yeah, regular season. And I'm like, dude, we got to get a place. We got to. I was like, I, we got to get a place in Chicago. We got to post up. We got to be there for the World Series. Yeah. And he's like, "Come on, man." He's like, "Dude, we just had. I think it was after the All Star break where we had like you know ten of our players. Right, right. That All Star team. Right. You know, well, it, was it was just awesome the season. year. It was, it was an awesome just season. that year. We got to do it. We got to do it. He's like, "Well, all right, look into it." So I got a hold of some people. You know, I looked online. It wasn't an Airbnb. It was some lady that has properties in in and out Wrigleyville, Lakeview. I rented from her like years ago. Anyway, she had a place three blocks from Wrigley on Newport, uh-huh. like Clark and Newport. That's close. And I said, yeah. And I said, hey, we want to be out there for or you it was October. To be all, yeah. Yeah. Where, where you think they're actually going to yeah, do it. Yeah, so then. we rented the house for a month. Shit. Yeah. And you, our flights, one way. We were going to get the return flight later. So did you, you were in Chicago for it? For all of it, yeah. For all the playoffs. Well, that... Okay, let me. It was after the San the San Francisco series, the okay. divisional. That's yeah, so cool. It's really. But you were in. Chicago. Did you get tickets to the games? Yeah, uh, I, have a, I have a good story about that. Uh, uh, wait, which game? I did went you go with to? Jack White to the first home, the Cubs home game. What? Yeah. How did that happen? Jack White Does, gave me he, his extra ticket. Is he a Cub fan? He's a baseball fan, and he's also good friends with the owner, Tom uh, uh, Ricketts. Tom Ricketts, yeah. <laughs> Jack I mean, they won? became friends. You How know. the hell did that even like? What Whenever is... Jack came came into went to Chicago to perform for Lala or whatever, uh-huh. he'd get you know he tickets to the shit. game. But then Ricketts f- swooped in. It was like VIP all the way. Wow! And just became friends. And I'm and I'm, you know, we have mutual friends. 
Because he lives in Tennessee, I think, or something. Right? Yeah. He doesn't live here. Yeah, and he's a, from Detroit. Oh, but he's he, a baseball fan, and he likes the Cubs. He's not going to be like... But he went for the World Series. Because, I mean, who wouldn't want to be there? Everybody. Fucking, fucking John Hamm was in yeah, Chicago exactly. for the World Series. Exactly. But that asshole was there to watch us lose. I know that for a fact. Someone heard him say that. Wow. And there's a story about him and Bill Murray. Really? And I know. Yeah. Is that like... Real not, quick. Is that, yeah. Is this public now? Are we allowed to Real say quick. this? We'll have to do a, a part two. But... Um, so, Murphy's Bleachers. Yes. There were parties upstairs on the roof, uh-huh. you know, private parties yeah. for VIPs. Uh, so Bill's up there with whoever, whatever the VIPs, probably Body Hunt and other Chicago. Yeah. And then Ham shows up with his St. Louis hat. Yeah. His right. old timey St. Louis hat. And he goes up, he sees Bill. He goes up to, I guess, shake his hand, say hi to Bill Murray. It's like, hey, Bill, John. And Bill takes his hat, flings it. Throws wow. It in, throws it off the rooftop into the alley behind Murphy's bleachers. <laughs> and John, of course, it pissed John off. He went off to find it. He couldn't find it. Wow. That Bill, happened. Bill was like, Did you witness this? Fuck out of here. No, but it's just the, I, I know heard. someone was there who they were wow. told the story because, you know. Bill were, Murray. He yeah. pulled that. I wouldn't think he would oh, do yeah. that. Oh, he hates St. Louis. He well, anybody, Louis. Uh, by the way, if anybody doesn't know anything about baseball, the Cubs. From Chicago and St. Louis Cardinals hate each other. Like, their biggest rival in history. And Bill Murray hates, he thinks, well, he's quoted as saying St. Louis fans are, you know, demons or something. <laughs> or the devil. St. Louis is the devil. Something like that. Look it up. It's it's a well-known. Wow. So, yeah, Horatio and I rented that house months before we knew it was going to happen. We watched every home game at at Wrigley. And you can hear it. By the way, that's the cool thing about Wrigley anywhere nearby. You can hear it. Yeah. Even from where I used to live in like anywhere in Lakeview. Lakeview, yeah. You can hear a home run. Yeah. So yeah. so you were just you were spotted up there, but you got tickets to game one, you said? What? Yeah, the first game, the first World Series game at Wrigley. Did you ever think about going to Cleveland? I did, but I stayed it I stayed. I stayed. Horatio actually had to leave a day early. And then uh, another crazy story. I get a call from a, a producer, a friend of mine. She's working with Triumph. He's like, uh, do you know where we can go to do a Triumph, the insult comic dog special? Uh-huh. Uh, I'm like, yeah, and there's a bunch of bars around here. I mean, I don't know people personally. He's like, well, we need a place to kind of camp out. Do you know anywhere? I'm like, stay in my place. Horatio just left. <laughs> I have a three-bedroom you know, condo house you know blocks away she's like really so yeah they set up their base camp wow you know smigel came in that's so cool and i helped them for the first four game first four innings of the game seven i was walking around wrigley with them getting interviews with people he interviewed me in front of the harry carey statue that's awesome and after that i was like we we're doing stuff by murphy's and i'm like i gotta watch this fucking game when you watch the game did you go did you go did you join the crowd you couldn't get into any of the bars because I mean there were every, no. The I'm streets. just talking about in the streets, the streets. Like yeah, after they yeah. Won. I stood in front of the marquee for until the rain delay, and then that's when I was like, "What do you do?" I had to pee for like three hours. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go on myself, so I went back to my house, took a piss. The delay was over like that. Yeah. So I watched an inning, the next inning. I think I watched the yeah I watched the win there, made some calls, and I ran back to. You just know, to celebrate with everybody. Yeah, else. and everybody was just yeah. I mean, you couldn't get it back in. It was so packed. What was and that like? Everyone was crying. Everyone was laughing. Everybody, yeah, everything. Everyone's just so drunk. It was so drunk and so happy and so like ecstatic. And I was like, oh my god. It was. I was. Yeah. I I wished I was in Chicago at that moment. I was definitely in L.A. watching in my apartment with my with my family. Yeah. But man, you were just, there. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I felt like. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're all one big happy family yeah. in the end. It's yeah. like, oh, man. I, I Don't be upset. It's going to happen again, and you'll be there. Uh, I got it. Thank you so much for coming. To tell everybody. Where yeah. People find you. Where, where, what, what do you got coming up? People can find me at Joey the Tuna. Joey the Tuna, like tuna fish. Well, dude, thanks so dude, much. Thank you. Um, and uh, for everybody, by the way, I'm wearing this today because this just – I just got all this awesome Shiaspera stuff. There's Chicago Cubs and sports-related uh, stuff on the website, shiaspera.com slash shop. Well, thanks so much. Check them out. Go Nunez.